What is virtualization? It is the process of creating a virtual version of something that is typically present physical. In computing parlance, we are talking about hardware virtualization. Now, this is Moore's law in its play and this is a couple of years old, but we can see that the number of transistors count has been consistently growing, growing, growing for the last 40 plus years. And you can read more about it later. And that's why virtualization has a big potential. So computers have more resources than ever, and it is going to grow. Organizations want the best out of their investment, which means utilize the resources. And having one OS on the server reduces this opportunities as I just told. And dependencies, compatibility, all these are possible problems and also the need for isolation that comes up. Virtualization makes this possible to use the hardware efficiently and at the same time give isolation to every application. So what can we do when we use virtualization? There are certain terms that we need to be comfortable with. An image or a template, what is this? So let's take a simple case to understand this. So I have my bare metal hardware. Okay. And in this, I create a VM. Of course, there's a hypervisor there. Don't get confused. So I create a VM and I install an OS, let's say Oracle Linux or Windows, what would be the case? And it is running fine. I take an export of it. Now that's something possible. It's like telling you take an export dump in a database or something like that and you create an image so that in another hardware you can just import this and the same installation comes back. You just need to configure in that install whatever has come up, what will be the host name, what will be the IP address, what will be the DNS specification. These are just some configurations you need to do in the OS but you don't need to do a complete installation. This makes it easy to have standardized images which can be used across an enterprise or as a cloud provider provided to everybody. So this makes it easy to spin up virtual machines. So today you will, I mean, not today, later on in the course, you will see how it's a matter of a couple of minutes in which you get your IAS instance up. If you've used AWS, you would have seen it. You just go and click a few clicks and then in a couple of minutes, you have your computer up and running. Saves a lot of time in terms of setting up infrastructure. But yes, in order to set up the base infrastructure, which is to set up the hardware and then put your hypervisor, you have to invest time and money to do that. But once that infrastructure is in place, whenever an end user or, or the user who's going to set up the VMs comes in, it's a matter of moment. So you do some upfront investment and set up time. Thereafter, things become much easier. It provides a means of high availability. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's take the same case again to the whiteboard so that it makes it easy to compare. So I have a bare metal hardware in which I have the operating system installed and my application is running in case something goes wrong with my hardware which could be as simple as a network card failure or whatever be the case, then your application is no more available. And if you want to bring it back, you'll have to fix it and bring it back. Or if it is a major problem with the hardware that you're not able to fix it, obviously you need to identify a new hardware. Then you go about installing the operating system again then deploying a backup of your application. So it's going to have a considerable amount of downtime before you can bring it up. Unless you set up a DR solution upfront. On the other hand, if you went with the virtualized world, what you could have had is, since we are talking about virtualization, we believe there are different hardwares already in our environment and we currently are having VMs running across. So there is probably a VM here, there is a VM here, there is a VM here, there is a VM here. And 
whether it is a planned downtime or an unplanned downtime, I can move VMs across hardware. So if I had some buffer available in my infrastructure, when something goes wrong in one of my setup, I can still move it. Now, how will this move? Please remember when I implement virtualization, every VM does not have all its components running inside the compute servers. So let's understand the concept of virtualization. What happens when you implement a virtualization environment? Number one, you have your compute nodes, which I represent by the black boxes. And this is where your VMs will get their CPU, memory or RAM, network attachments, etc. Apart from this, in the virtualization environment, you also have a storage array implemented or a shared storage implemented. Now what happens is this is where you might have your VM images already stored. So these images are available for you to deploy new VMs. Remember I told you from this I can import and create. So let's say we went about importing these images and created some VMs which are running. Now as far as the VM is concerned, it is using only the compute memory CPU within the compute nodes. So here it is using all this. Every every one of them is using the compute memory, etc. Now where is the storage kept? Finally, all those files have to be stored somewhere, right? Now they are all kept in what is called as VM disks, which are kept in this shared storage. So my VM, which I've pointed to right now, let's say has got a certain amount of storage, which we will keep in the shared storage, which I will call as the VM disk. So when you start your VM, basically it's going to read from this disk and bring it up. Now there are different hypervisors, different virtualization available. Each person have their own terms and th technology. We will not worry about it, but we are trying to understand the basic concept here. When I spin up a VM, I can tell in which of the physical hardwares I want it to come up. Do I want it to come up on this hardware, this hardware, etc. Those kind of controls are available. And secondly, if at all there is a problem with one of these hardwares, with my VM management console, I can ask VMs to move to other hardwares manually or I can automate it. Not only that, what happens in this case is, when the computer crashed, this guy crashed with the VM disk, I can bring this VM up with the VM disk, I'll bring the other one up. So that's what is going to happen. But even more interestingly, what you can do is when you're doing an unplanned, then it is anyway going to happen all of a sudden. But if you're going to do it as a planned activity, wherein you need to do some hardware maintenance. So you already know this hardware is going to go down. So let's say, we already know the hardware in the middle is going to go down. So given that I know this is going to go down before I do my maintenance activity, I can move my VMs across to different hardware and thereby what is going to be the result? My VMs will come over here. My hardware is actually idle right now. Now, if I bring this down, no application is affected. I do my maintenance and then once it is up back, I can bring back my VMs into their original location. So I can move these guys back by bringing them into place, which makes it much more simpler with no downtime as such or minimal downtime. Now please note, the hypervisor is running on the physical hardware over there. Apart from that, we have our shared storage, which is not part of the hypervisor as such. 
hypervisor is running on each compute. Now, if my hypervisor goes down, then I have the problem of one of these hardwares not being available. Now, typically to manage your virtualization environment, the virtualization provider also provides for what is called as a VM management console or a management server. So that is a separate application altogether. Now this management server will be configured to go and discover which are the various physical hosts that are available, what is the storage that is available. And this is the component to which as an administrator you connect and work. So administrators log into this. Administrators don't log into the physical hardware as such. That is only to install the hypervisor they do it. Thereafter you log into the management server which is part of the hypervisor which will do all this. So the only question you can have is what if my management server goes down? So there is high availability that they provide for it. But if my hypervisor per se goes down then it is only a matter of one hardware going down. So hypervisor going down is as good as the hardware of a single computer going down. And then storage goes down. So there also you implement replication, RAID or whatever so that you ensure at a hardware level fault tolerance is taken care. So that has to be done of course yes. So everything doesn't get automated we need to provision for things so that it is taken care.